uh, very fine institutions from the state of California. Um, so thank you for everyone who is connecting. We're still receiving people and people entering our session today. So we're really, really happy uh, to have you here with us. If you had the opportunity to join, uh, join us last Tuesday, that was the first of our webinar series with um, uh, Study California. And today we also have the uh, privilege of uh, having finest, four fine institutions that will be talking uh, to us and presenting, uh, telling us about uh, a very, very specific topic today. So uh, we're really happy to have you all here with us. And like I said, um, we are going to then start. And before we get into the topic, we want to tell you a little bit about Education USA. So if you are not uh, familiar with Education USA, if you are not, uh, if you haven't heard for, uh, about us before, I really, really quick uh, want to tell you about uh, our services and what we do. So we are a network of advising centers that we are all around the world, uh, more than 400 uh, advising centers in all the world. Um, uh, and depending where you're connecting from, we can help you uh, uh, find your closest advising center. If you're connecting from Mexico, we have 26 advising centers here, but in every single country in our region, we can um, direct you into your closest advising center. And we are the official source of information. We are a program from the US Department of State. Um, and we provide official information. We provide accurate information, comprehensive information, current information, uh, and our advising basic services are free in all of our centers. Different centers might be able to offer other services, but our advising um, services uh, are for free. Uh, we talked about a full range of different um, um, topics. We include things from starting your college search and what do you want to study, where do you want to study, all the way to preparing you for your departure uh, in, for example, in the coming months if you uh, did your admission process uh, during this, this year. Uh, we, uh, in... Um, before pre-pandemic, right? We uh, did. We usually do a lot of uh, in-person events. We visit visit schools. We do outreach. We have in-center sessions. Uh, and since March last year, all of our services are still available, but in virtual uh, form. So we do have also one-on-one -on -one sessions. We do workshops, uh, webinars like this, and all of our resources are online. A lot of our resources uh, from our library are also. Um, um, online so you can uh, visit um, your closest advising center too. All right, uh, and well, today we are going to be talking about transferring in the California's public education system. And this is a very interesting topic if you are thinking about um, community colleges and, and how the, the, the whole topic of transferring happens. And I'm going to then leave the floor to Cristina Delgado. Thank you for being here with us and she will be introducing also uh, her colleagues. So take it, take it away. You. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we're just gonna switch over to our presentation. We're very happy to be here as a part of this event uh, and on behalf of Study California. Uh, and we're, our topic today is our public higher education system in California, which I might be a little biased, we might be a little biased, but it is definitely one of the best in the United States and the transferability of coursework is quite easy um, for students. So let's get going. Uh, we're gonna talk about the different systems so you have an idea of what each of the systems, how they are, how they kind of work together, how they exist and what they have to offer because they are each unique in their own right. And then we'll give you some information on our uh, specific schools and then have time for your questions. Next slide. So I am indeed Christina Delgado. I work at Irvine Valley College in Irvine, California. I'll be joined today by John Green from Sonoma State University, Paul Hoffman from Sacramento State University, and Sarah McGregor from San Jose State University. So some fantastic institutions in California. So with that, I will pass it on to Sarah. So if you look at this diagram, you'll see that this is basically the higher education system in the United States. 
We start with a high school diploma and most students get a high school diploma after four years of high school. But then you can go in different ways. You could get an associate degree, that's a two year degree, or you could go for a bachelor's degree, which is a four year degree, or like we said, you can go to associate and then to bachelor. Um, the associate degrees are given by the California Community Colleges. California State Universities are authorized to, to offer bachelor and master's degrees, and the University of California offers bachelor's, master's, and PhDs and other professional degrees. Let's go to the next slide. So we're going to focus on these three public education systems. California Community College, CCC, California State University, CSU, and the UCs, the University of California. And I think Christina is going to talk about community colleges first. Thank you. And before I go, uh, I know it was just put in the chat, but I want to make sure that you know that you can put your questions uh, in the chat to Q&A at EdUSA. And then we'll get to those at the end because there will be a lot of information and certainly there will be hopefully we hope some questions. So the California Community College system uh, is what I represent Irvine Valley College is one of the 116 community colleges uh, that exist in California and you can see that map, although it's quite small the names of them. We are up and down the state of California so there's a wide range of choice in terms of where you might want to study. Community colleges, California schools, we serve over 2 million students, and it is actually the largest uh, higher education system in the United States. So even though the concept sometimes of what a community college is is not well understood uh, outside of the US, it's actually pretty common to go to a community college inside the US. In fact, one third of university graduates in the United States attend a community college, so they'll do that pathway first. Community college uh, transfer success. So basically what it is, the bachelor's degree in the US is four years. And as Sarah mentioned, you can either do all four years at the bachelor level, at the university level, or you can do the first and second year at a community college, transfer all of that coursework to the university, and then do year three and four at the university and get that same bachelor's degree. It's the exact same bachelor's degree, although there's a couple benefits to choosing community college first. And you'll see over 29% of the bachelor's degrees awarded from the University of California. So UCLA, UC Irvine, UC Berkeley, 29% of those started at a community college. And for the California State University system, the CSU system, over 51% of the bachelor's recipients are community college students. So it's quite common. And in fact, the STEM fields, 48%, of students graduating in a STEM major at the UC started at a community college. So it's not as uh, strange as sometimes it may seem to students from other countries. Next slide. So what do we do at the community college? So as I mentioned, the university transfer, so it's the two plus two system, two years at uh, community college and two years at university leads to a bachelor's degree. And we also do vocational preparation. So not everything that we do at the community college level is university pathway bound. We have our two-year degrees, our vocational degrees that focus on giving you practical skills in a variety of fields in the arts and sciences to prepare you to enter into the workforce. We are the largest workforce educator uh, in the States. And the type of programs that you can do are quite large throughout the state of California. We also provide basic skills. So there's a lot of language training uh, at the different community college, English language training, um, as well as basic skills in math and, and English written composition. So those are the types of programs that we have. The degrees, as Sarah mentioned, are the associate degree. That's the most common degree. That is a two-year degree. And those, again, are either transfer pathway bound or vocational bound, employment bound. And then we also have certificates because not everybody wants to go to university, but maybe you want to get the skills you need to be effective in getting a job either in the US or in your home country. 
So the certificates that we offer focus just on those specific skills. Maybe it's an accounting certificate or a dental hygienist certificate or something along those lines. And they range anywhere from four months to about a year, a year and a half. So the question is, why would you go to a community college as opposed to going directly to a four-year university? Well, the biggest reason is the huge cost savings. And you can see the cost of going to college graphic there. Community college tuition is about 8,000 to 9,000 US dollars in California. Comparatively, the Cal State started about 16,000, the UCs are about 40, 45,000, and then privates can start at 50,000 plus. So going to a community college for those first two years can save you anywhere from 30 to 70% of your tuition costs. And again, same degree level that you're going to be able to get after going to a community college. So we always tell students, why not save your money? Because what you're doing at the first two years in the US system is pretty similar everywhere. It is focusing on general education, the basic courses. So save your money and do those courses up with us and then really invest when you're doing your major in those last two years at the Cal State system. And it's also an easier admission process. It's open access. We don't have SAT requirements or ACT requirements. We don't look for a specific GPA. It really is uh, just to see that you've graduated high school or are over the age of 18. Next slide. So in terms of the application process, it does differ from the university. As I mentioned, it's much easier. There's no standard um, online application. Each school kind of does it a little bit differently. We do, again, typically need to see high school graduation, um, and we also need to see some form of English proficiency. Although some community colleges have intensive English programs on their campus, so you could start with very little English and then just continue on um, on your pathway towards your education. And that is a little bit about community colleges. Uh, so I will pass it on to my colleague, John, who's gonna tell you about the Cal States. I think you are still muted, John. Muted, and I am still muted. And so I was just saying that um, you're lucky today that we actually have three people from the California State University system. You will be hearing about the USC or the UC system, but I think it's a really um, great opportunity to hear um, about these three CSUs that we have today. And so the CSU system is composed of 23 campuses throughout the state of California. And so, like you saw from the community colleges in how robust um, number of community colleges are throughout the uh, state of California. The CSU system, as you see, is well-placed on the coast, in the heartlands, in the central capital of Sacramento, all the way down to San Diego, right on the border with Mexico. So we literally are placed all throughout California and in very specific zones. Some are urban, which are downtown. Some are suburban, which are more in the residential area and some are in the agriculture area like Stanislaus and Fresno and Bakersfield. And so what they all bring to students that are interested in studying at the CSU system is a wealth of different type of experiences and learning opportunities from high tech, such as San Jose, where Sarah is from, San Jose State University, um, to Sacramento, which also has high tech, very strong business and engineering programs, to Sonoma State, which is in the middle of wine country, and they're all spread apart throughout the state of California, which makes us the largest university system in the United States. And some people um, can compare us to the largest um, public university system in the world. So again, it's tons of opportunities for students that want to come study in one of the CSUs in California. And we have over 18,000 students spread throughout our CSUs in California, um, with many of them in some of the larger institutions and then places like Sonoma State where we have students that are coming to study our wine programs. Um, unlike some of the higher research institutions like the UCs, um, we are a teaching institution. So the UCs are research where a lot of their funding and their departments are focused on research and development. Uh, the CSUs are teaching universities. So when you come to a CSU, you can expect that the professors and the classes are gonna be a little bit smaller and focused on teaching you so you can learn about the aspects of the degree that you're studying in. And so overall, these 23 campuses 
are here to serve um, domestic students, especially students in California, but we highly, highly value international students. So not only the international students can, can gain their education, but provide that experience of diversity to our California students that are on campus. And so next slide. So here's some other statistics about the CSU system. CSU's all throughout California award over half of their bachelor's degrees in California. So that's pretty much one out of every four California graduate in the state of California has got their degree from one of the California State's University. And I mentioned that our high quality academic programs, which are coming from these teaching universities, um, can range from cybersecurity, software engineering, you know, San Jose State's right in Silicon Valley, to sustainable business and environmental studies that are like at Sonoma State University and Fresno State University with their agricultural programs. So these programs are very, very diverse and it just takes some time and research um, on, your on your behalf to go in and look at these websites to kind of see what programs are out there and what you may be interested in. We also have one of the lowest tuition rates in the United States for all public universities. And that little um, table that you see there on the right kind of gives a very um, um, strong detail on what it looks like between the cost of universities from UC Berkeley and the $40,000 range to university, state universities like Arizona State and Idaho State, which are more inland a little bit in their, in their states. Um, we come in under at 16,800 for tuition and fees to study at a California State University that doesn't count the living expenses, residence halls or living off campus. So overall, um, it might cost you somewhere between the high 20,000s to the mid 30,000s to study at a California State University, which includes tuitions, books and living expenses. Um, Overall, the entrance requirements for a California student, State University for an international student has a GPA requirement about 2.5, and there is no requirement for SAT or ACT. So basically, we're accepting you on your transcripts um, from your high school based upon the GPA that you accumulate over your studies there. As like um, Christina said, um, international students that are coming through the California or the community college system. Um, we value those students very highly and we cater to them and we have um, departments that are dedicated to transfer students, whether domestic transfer students or international transfer students. We wanna make that pathway as smooth and easy as possible to make sure that student that's studying at a community college will easily transfer to the California State University that they are, wish to attend. Next slide. The application process is a little bit different. So unlike Christina and some of the other universities, you might've heard like common app and common line application. The California State University has its own application system, which is called Cal State Apply. So you definitely can look at that URL that I put there or just search Cal State Apply, do a search online, and you're gonna come up with this website right here. And what this means is that all the CSUs are locked into this online application and students have to go onto the online application to complete uh, the application, whether they're coming to my Sonoma State University or San Jose State or Sac State or anyone that the CSUs in California, you have to go to this online application first. And there is a charge for that application, which is a fee of $70. And that will be for every CSU that you apply to. So, Again, it's really important working with Education USA um, to research the CSUs that you're interested in, in attending, to see if they have the programs that you want to apply to, to see if they maybe have an intensive English language program that you need to attend first to improve your English before you study at the CSU. But going through that research with Education USA or friends or referrals or families, it'll help you get through this application process so you're not wasting your time and money on completing the wrong application to the wrong institution. But in general, I think if you're dedicated and committed to coming to California to get your bachelor's degree, the CSU system provides a strong opportunity for your studies as well as strong internships. OPT, which is opt, uh, optional practical training, which allows you to study or get a job in California 
that's based upon the degree that you attain and be able to stay there for one year. And if you're in a STEM field, you can stay up for three years. And more information like that would be available on our websites as well as um, talking to Education USA or talking to some other um, people that would know more about this type of situation. Um, prior, priority application to study in fall is usually October 1st to November 30th. And so if you're seeking scholarships, some of the CSUs offer international scholarships. Some of the CSUs offer scholarships that are available to the entire population. And usually with those scholarships, there's an application um, requirement that you need to have this application done within this time frame and submit the actual scholarship application usually by the beginning of February. But every website is gonna have their dedicated scholarship page, which will tell you the requirements you need to follow in order to um, be um, eligible for the application or the scholarship that they have at their CSU. Next slide. And so now we're gonna hand this off to Paul from Sacramento State to talk a little about the UC, the University of California system. Paul? Unmute, that would help. Uh, there thank you, go. John, uh, yeah. thank you very much. I'd like to uh, just introduce myself. I'm Paul Hoffman. And I'm representing California State University, Sacramento. I'm going to share a little bit about the University of California system uh, 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 with you today, but I'm actually a member of the CSU as Sarah and uh, John are. Um, as Christina and John both talked about in their presentations, there's some really unique aspects to each of the tiers of higher education. And the UC system also has its unique role to play. Um, the UC system is made up of 10 campuses. There are five medical centers that serve uh, regions of California, three national laboratories, also very large. More than 280,000 students study and approximately 60,000 of those students are at the graduate level. And that defines the unique nature of the UC system. There's more of an emphasis on graduate education and there's more of an emphasis on research. They do offer uh, bachelor's degrees, master's degrees and doctorates. Uh, as Christina did a wonderful job of pointing out, uh, a large number of uh, degree earners at the bachelor level uh, in, in the UC system actually start at a community college. So while we say there are three tiers of, of uh, systems of higher education in, in California, it, it's actually three ports of entry. That's how I look at it. There's three different entry points. Um, California remains an edu educational destination throughout the world. Students from all over the world are interested in studying in California. And, and it really comes down to high quality programs. And, and quite honestly, very good weather and a welcoming environment. Next slide, please. Uh, the UC system is also very, has a diverse academic portfolio, more than 160 different academic disciplines, 800 different degree programs. Some of those very specialized. As I mentioned, a strong focus on research. Um, seven UC campuses are members of the prestigious Association of American Universities, AAU. The UC system has produced 68 Nobel Prize winners, 40 Pulitzer Prize winners. And the annual cost of a UC education is about $44,000 per year. So going back to Christina's example about the cost of a community college, and then you compare that to the $44,000 a year times four, you're up to $176,000 uh, just in tuition to study at a UC. Minimum GPA requirements, it's a 3.4 GPA. That's the minimum. There is a wide range of, of admission criteria. UC Berkeley, UCLA, UC San Diego, 
will be highly competitive, where 3.4 GPA probably would not be able to, to uh, you know, be competitive in an application pool of undergraduates. A 3.4, 3.5 may be very competitive at some of the others, UC Merced, UC Riverside, some of the UCs that are newer and, and maybe don't quite have that tradition and history built up. Yet they're fine institutions in their own right. Next slide. The application process. So uh, as with the CSU, uh, the UC has its standardized online application. The application fee is $80. Students must demonstrate language proficiency uh, in the form of a TOEFL or IELTS uh, score. That language proficiency is going to vary by academic discipline. Uh, proof of high school graduation with a minimum GPA of a 3.4. Uh, you will be uh, required to submit a personal statement. Uh, Personal statements an important part of the application in the UC system, because unlike the CSU, where you complete an application in the CSU, you're really applying to the university. But in the UC system, you're actually applying to specific programs. Um, it's possible that you may not be admitted to the computer engineering program at UC Berkeley, but you could gain admission into computer science. Um, you have to demonstrate that you have the financial uh, ability to, to pay for uh, your first year of education. Priority application period is a, the same as the CSU, October 1st through November, November 30th. And application deadlines vary by campus. Uh, I guess I'd like to wrap up all three uh, of the systems and just you know, tell you one thing that they all have in common, whether we're a community college, a CSU, or a UC. Um, California higher education is welcoming to everybody. That is one of our roles. We all share that in common. And uh, I, I, I'm confident that that's going to continue for a long time in the future. Uh, we will continue to be a leader in higher education in the United States. Next slide, I think that might have been, yep, well, it's still me. So now we're talking about specific institutions. And as I told you a few moments ago, I represent Sacramento State. Uh, we are one of the 23 campuses in the CSU system. We are the sixth largest campus. We have about 32,000 students. Uh, we have a strong and diverse academic portfolio, 64 undergraduate programs, 51 graduate programs, and five doctoral degrees. Uh, yet, like many of the CSUs, we offer small class sizes. Our student to faculty ratio is about 24 to one. Um, we are spoiled in, in Sacramento in that we have a beautiful, large campus. Uh, if you can see the, the picture in my background, that's the entry into campus and you can see how many trees there are. Uh, we have more than 3,000 trees on campus. The campus uh, is adjacent to the beautiful American River. Uh, and we're only six miles from the state capitol building. And we call ourselves the Capitol University because we are the only university in the state capital of Sacramento. Uh, we're the fourth most diverse university in the Western United States. Uh, we are an Hispanic serving institution. We are ranked 17 best, 17th for undergraduate teaching in the Western region and 20th overall for public universities in the Western United States. Uh, 
again, a beautiful campus. And I'm proud to be able to also share with you that I am a product of the CSU system myself. I actually uh, earned a degree from San Jose State. Um, uh, and I re often recite and tell people I would not be where I am today without the opportunity that I had at San Jose State. Thank you. Thank you for uh, coming and staying today. Paul, that was a great lead in to me talking about San Jose State. Um, we have many illustrious alumni, including, including you. So San Jose State was founded in 1857. We are the founding campus of the California State University system. So we are the oldest uh, institution of pi public higher education in the Western United States. Um, we're located in downtown San Jose. So if you prefer a urban environment, uh, we've got something for you. Uh, you can see that there's a beautiful um, uh, tower and surrounded by grass and lots of um, uh, trees, but we are right in the center of downtown San Jose. And San Jose itself is the 10th largest city in the United States and the third largest in California. And as a city, it's very diverse. Did you know that over 100 different languages are spoken in the city of San Jose? So uh, you'll always find someone uh, who speaks your language. We are proud to say that we are the heart of Silicon Valley as John mentioned earlier as well. And so that what that means is that our professors work in um, industry and technology and bring that real world knowledge to the classroom. Um, we are also the number one university for the most Silicon Valley hires. It means most of the companies in Silicon Valley hire students, for, graduates of San Jose State. So we're very proud of that um, as well. We're a big school like Sacramento. We have about 33,000 total students. Uh, and we offer 145 different fields of study and 108 concentrations or minors. So you can kind of put together some uh, a program that fits your interests. Uh, of the 33,000 uh, total students, we have the largest number of international students. Uh, and we are very proud of this as well. We are the number one public um, master's university hosting international students. Uh, so international students are, are valued and an important part of our campus. Uh, and I'm excited to say that we have uh, just announced uh, very recently the Global Spartan Scholarship for new undergraduate and graduate students. So I'd be happy to send you information about that. And Spartan, this is our, our mascot. His name is Sammy Spartan. Um, and so that's why we call it the Spartan Scholarship. So I'm happy to answer questions later if you have any. Next slide. Hi, John back again. I am offering some information about Sonoma State University and um, what makes it unique in the 24 campus system of the California State University system. We are considered a mid-size or small campus with about 9,000 students. And what makes Sonoma State University unique is its size and its location, which is about one hour north of San Francisco in the middle of wine country. So if you've heard of the famous Napa, Sonoma County wine areas, Sonoma State's in the heart of that region and that affects some of the programs in our business programs and some of the other environmental study programs that we have that all focus on conservation, environmental studies. And so we have about 
um, like I said, 8,000 students, and we're um, primarily an undergraduate campus. Um, with that, we have beautiful residence halls that you might be seeing in the background of my um, video that's going on with about um, 3,100 beds, and they're primarily freshmen and sophomore that stay on campus. And they go to the center of our campus to eat their meals in our beautiful student center and rec center. So we're a very inward focused campus. Students that come to Sonoma State University are looking for that smaller public university feel. They're looking for liberal arts, business, um, biology, environmental studies, and some tech. We have very good computer science and electrical engineering program. And like um, Sarah, but maybe not to the same extent, a lot of our students do end up going down to the um, San Francisco Silicon Valley area for their internships and for jobs in the future. Um, undergraduate programs, we have 46 majors and 47 minors. And like I said, they uh, range from um, business, very strong in the theater arts. You might see one of the videos behind me that show the Green Music Center, which is just an amazing building inside and out that holds our music program and has very large concerts in the summer that are indoor outdoor and does our graduation ceremony. So once you graduate from Sonoma State University, your walk is going to be through the middle of this um, Green Music Center, which is a very beautiful and entertaining place. Graduate programs, we have 15 and they go from biology to computer engineering, computer science, and then our MBA programs, which has one of the only wine MBA programs in the United States, as well as a, um, a public administration program. So Sonoma State University is, is students that come to us are looking for a little bit different type of atmosphere, a different type of size, and are looking for a public university that has a little different types of offerings, but still be close to one of the greatest cities of San Francisco. And so if you want more information, feel free to uh, find me online or find our website or talk to Education USA about um, our programs and they'd be happy to steer you in my direction. And that's it for my slide. Go Christina. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I represent, as I mentioned, Irvine Valley College. Um, I work with all the international students there. And Irvine Valley College is, as I mentioned at the beginning, one of the 116 community colleges in California. And, you know, we all do very similar things. And sorry, I think working from home, my cat is about to jump into my presentation. So we're just going to roll with it and see what happens. <laughs> We all do very similar things, uh, but what you're going to want to look for, certainly, as you're looking for a community college, depending on what you're interested in, is transfer is your primary focus, then you're going to want to look at maybe the transfer rates uh, of the particular college that you're researching. If you're looking more for vocational prep, then certainly making sure they have the subject that you're interested in studying and even internship opportunities in either the city itself or at the school. Those are the kind of things you're gonna to wanna to research as you're making your decision. And I'm happy to say that Irvine Valley College um, currently ranks as having the number one university transfer rate out of all 116 community colleges in our state. So our state chancellor's office tracks all of that information annually and we transfer the most students to the university system. Um, most of our students certainly stay in California. They like California. What's not to like about California? They want to go to one of these great Cal States that you've been hearing about. Um, and then also the UC system schools. But I will let you know that going to a California community college doesn't restrict you from transferring to really anywhere in the United States. Your options are pretty open. You're just going to want to work closely with your academic counselors to make sure you're taking the right courses for transfer um, when you get to the US and start studying at a community college. That's the key. It's kind of like a puzzle. As long as you're taking the right classes, it just fits naturally into the university system. Also our location. Um, I know safety is a big concern for folks coming to the United States. And Irvine itself, we're in Southern California, so we're about an hour south of Los Angeles. Irvine has been listed as one of the FBI's safest city in America list for the last 15 years. 
So it is a very safe, comfortable location for students to come and live in. It's a city, but it's not a big city, um, but it also is kind of the Silicon Valley of Southern California. So there's a large tech industry here, a large biomedical industry, and lots of opportunities for internship upon graduation. Um, it's also a beautiful area. It's a planned community. And so there's over 60 miles of bike trails. There's lots of parks and open space. We're like 15 minutes away from the beaches, which is wonderful. And we're also 15 minutes away from Disneyland to give you an idea of where we are located. I think one thing you're gonna to wanna to look at and know is that most community colleges in California, including IVC, my school, have guaranteed transfer agreements or guaranteed um, degrees that will allow you to transfer to, in this case, the Cal State University or the University of California system, as long as you follow one of those specific degree plans and of course, get the right GPA, that's very important. Um, you will be able to get into one of those system schools. So that's a nice way to feel comfortable starting at a different institution, knowing that if you're following one of these guaranteed transfer pathways, you're going to be able to get into a university get, to get your bachelor's. IVC has over 80 different majors in both the arts and sciences. Certainly business administration and computer science are the two biggest majors on our campus. Uh, we also have a pretty uh, large pre-engineering track. Our sister school is UC Irvine. It's right up the road, and we transfer a lot of students into their engineering program. Community colleges, including IBC, also have a lot of student support. So we are different in that we're not resident. Typically, we're not residential campuses. So I think maybe there's two, maybe three community colleges in California that have dormitories. The rest do not. So all of our students live off campus, and that's the same at IBC. Um, we do have a fair number of housing resources posted on our webpage. So our students typically live with local host families or in some of the apartments in the area. And there's a bunch within walking distance of the school. And there's a lot of academic support in terms of tutoring and transfer center and career center and academic counseling to really make sure that you're on the right path for your future goals. And there's actually also a student life. I think that's a little bit different. I mean, certainly universities, I think because they're residential and I think my colleagues can talk more about this too, have a more active student life because the students are on campus all the time. Um, so it's a little bit different in that way. But IBC actually does a fair amount of things uh, for students. There's over 50 different clubs. There's athletics and there's the cat. There is athletics. There's an active theater department and program. Um, so lots of things that you can get involved in to have fun, right? Because you want to have a little bit of fun while you're going to school. And of course, our tuition, it's very affordable. It's only about $8,700 uh, US dollars per year. And we like to say in the community college world that the tuition of the community college is almost like a scholarship in and of itself because it's such a great cost savings. So that is a little bit about uh, Irvine Valley College. And I think that takes us to the end of our presentation. I did wanna put something in the chat which is the Study California website. So I think I just popped it into the chat. Study California has a lot of information about all the great systems that you have heard about here today. Um, it talks also about the different regions in California. So you can kind of get an idea of maybe, you know, if you really like snow or you really like the beach or more rural or a big city, you can get an idea of what it's like in California and where the institutions are located. And you can also do some research on the schools that are available. So definitely um, take a look at that link. Visit with the Ed USA advisors because they know us as well. They know our systems. They can give you some really good advice. They can't tell you where to go, but they can help you figure out based on your interests where you might want to go, which might make sense. Uh, so with that, I will hand it back over to my colleagues at Ed USA for the questions. Thank you so much, Christina, and everyone for those that very informative presentation. Thank you. I every time I learn also many things. So thank you. Um, if you um, uh, have uh, questions and you've been directing those to uh, Q and A, um, Education USA, 
San Luis Potosí with Edith. Um, she can. She has been receiving your questions. So Edith can help us uh, direct those questions. So we're all yours, Edith, if you have questions for our presenters today. Yes, thank you, Juanma. Um, yeah, in fact, I have a couple of questions that were sent uh, directly to, to me through the chat. Um, well, uh, I want to start by telling you that one of the attendees is saying thank you very much for the information. It's very useful and it makes, makes easier to decide where, where to go. And well, after that, the first question, it's regard, well, it says, could I transfer from an associate degree to a master's degree program? Is that possible? Uh, no, you would need to get a bachelor's degree first. And then upon completion of your bachelor's degree, then you'd be able to go on to the university, uh, to the, uh, excuse me, to the master's level. Thank you. And well, I have a question that is uh, for you, Christina. It says, you're, uh, you said you mentioned that there are transferring agreements with uh, universities in California, but do you have any other agreements with um, and other states? That's a great question. And I'm glad you asked that because yes, we do. And there is a, there is a system in uh, California called assist.org. If you go um, online and type it in, you will be able to look at specifically for the UC and the Cal states to see which courses uh, equate to courses at the UC and the Cal states. And community colleges also have agreements, articulation agreements with schools outside of uh, California. That's when working with your academic counselor at your specific community college is gonna be super important because they know how to read those agreements. They know what courses match. They can help make sure you're taking the right courses. When you go out of state, you have to be a little bit more careful but again, the first two years of the undergraduate degree in the U.S. are pretty similar. You know, you have to take your math, your English, your basic general education courses. Um, so yes, you there are uh, guaranteed transfer agreements with out-of-state institutions that will vary by community college who they are articulated with. And um, one thing I forgot to mention that my kind, very kind colleague at Sonoma State reminded me is. One other great thing about community colleges is that what the universities, so the Cal States, the UCs, wherever, what they're gonna make their admission decision on is the grade you get at a community college. Um, so your high school grades kind of aren't as important or aren't important at all. They're gonna look at your community college grades to make their admiss admission decision. Well, I, think, I think that answers another question that was uh, asked here. It says, is it necessary to present the SAT or ACT once that I finish the community college? So the answer is not right. Okay, great. Um, well, here I have a, another question regarding tuition. It says a part of tuition, what other costs do I have to consider? Um, and, and how much do I have to present proof of in order to study in California? I can start with that. Um, I think it, it varies uh, in, by geographic location in, in California. San Francisco, for example, is, is very expensive. Um, but let me talk just generally about the other uh, expenses you should consider. First and foremost is housing. Um, you know, uh, you rent an apartment or you live on campus, there's a cost there. Uh, if you're living on campus, you need a meal plan. If you are living off campus, you'll need to uh, budget money every month to be able to, to purchase groceries and, and feed yourself. Uh, health insurance is also uh, something that should be uh, factored in. And that, that could vary you know, anywhere from you know, $1,000 to, to $2,000 an academic year. Uh, books, certainly. Uh, is in, needs to be included in that. And then incidental expenses, any miscellaneous expenses that you would have over the course of a year. Um, one strategy to help keep costs down, uh, and I always encourage international students to consider this, make sure that, that uh, you have any dental work 
or, or you know, medical you know, treatment that you may need before you come, have that done in your home country. Um, that will be a big savings. Uh, you know, dental uh, care in the United States is very expensive, particularly if you're not well insured. Um, uh, but then again, you know, when I talked about housing, I'll go back to the different locations. Uh, San Francisco, a one bedroom apartment in San Francisco, maybe $2,500 a month. That same apartment in San uh, Sacramento is 1,200 a month. So there's really a wide range uh, in terms of cost of living. Um, I'm sure my, my colleagues from other schools would ha have some other ideas as well. Yeah, you're right, Paul. It, it definitely varies in terms of costs and students can look at, you know, instead of having an apartment looking for a room and rooms can be much cheaper if, as long as you find some good roommates. Um, you mentioned the meal plans. It can vary in Sonoma State. In our residence halls, there's um, options where you can just have your room only and get your own meals off campus. Some of our residence halls have their own kitchens and some of the plans have three meals a day. It's a beautiful kitchen with seven restaurants inside it. So it's really a great place to go. Um, but it's really um, how you have to determine what your costs are going to be. In general, for international students, you know, they're always looking for scholarships or they want to work on campus. In general, most international students should be able to find an on-campus job. And that's the only way you can work legally in the United States is working on campus at a maximum of 20 hours a week. And if you're looking at how much you get paid per hour, that can range from 10 bucks an hour up to 15, even more, depending upon the position that you're in. You could be working in a cafeteria, you could be a research assistant um, working for a department, or you could be working for me, helping me recruit more students to Sonoma State. So there's lots of options that are available to kind of help offset the costs that you have while you're studying at a, um, at a, a school in California. Thank you very much. Very, very informative, very interesting also. Um, well, now that uh, John mentioned that uh, we're going to be talking about work study opportunities next Monday in our next series or next mm -hmm. webinar, so don't miss it. Um, we have in here um, another question that says, if I transfer from a community college to a university, can I apply for the same financial aid or scholarships at the university, as if I was um, as if I was a, a fresh student, a freshman. Pretty much, it's going to vary, um, and maybe Sarah can handle this because they have their scholarship that's more relevant to international students. Our our scholarship is for new students. Um, and uh, I believe it is open to new, new students who transfer in as mm -hmm. well. Um, it's also for continuing students. So uh, maybe you, you study for a year and then you can uh, apply for the, the scholarship once you're there. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for like our scholarships and maybe some of the other CSU scholarships, the application window is for students that are starting in fall. So the scholarships not available say that you want to start in our spring semester. So that time window you'd have to apply to Sonoma State or CSU in the fall semester, meet that requirement and then submit your scholarship application before a deadline, which is usually in the beginning of um, that next that same year that you'd be starting in the fall and is competitive based upon G in entering GPA or transferring GPA and the essay that you write. And the scholarship maximum can be about $5,000 a year. So it doesn't cover your full tuition, but it does offset some of the costs. And scholarships are gonna vary. Some of the other CSUs, in addition to Sarah's, well, might have some other international scholarships available. And you're gonna to have to look find on their websites to determine where they list that scholarship. And many times it's under the international program site or um, their admission sites under the, under the international student section. Okay, thank you. 
And well, next uh, question is regarding uh, the type of visa that a student needs in order to go to study to a community college or a university in California. Students need an F1 student visa. Either or, if they're going through a community college or, okay, or university. Yep, for all programs, all of our schools, yep. Thanks. Then, well, here one of the attendees is asking, I am a US citizen, but I've been living in Mexico since, since I was nine. Is the application process the same to me or it changes? Um, for some, uh, for the California State University um, system, you be applying as a domestic student. And since you're a US resident, you're eligible for, for financial aid and all the other um, um, funding that's available. So it is definitely different than, um, than applying as an international student. And, and you'd be directed, once you go through the online application, you'd be directed by the questions that are you a US citizen, you click that, and then that changes the whole application to be focused on you as a domestic student. And I don't know, what about you, Christina? That's the same for the community colleges. You would be treated as a domestic student. So in terms of sort of all the supporting documentation that I mentioned that international students have to do, our domestic students, there is a common application for that. In the community college system, it's online. And once you do that, basically you get issued a student ID and you're admitted. So um, it's quite a different process. And there's no visa. And there's no visa. Yeah, you're just coming in on your on your US citizenship. And you would also be um, eligible for financial aid, just like John was mentioning. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, well, here I have another one that says, um, I'm still studying at the university here in Mexico. Um, is it possible for me to transfer to the United States to finish my bachelor's degree there? Uh, well, yes. Okay. okay, go ahead, Paul. No, I was just gonna say it, it's certainly possible. Um, I, I would encourage you to do a careful cost benefit analysis uh, of where you're at in your degree program. Um, if you're a little bit too far along, you know, you're junior or beyond, you may find that transferring actually results in losing credits and, and ultimately then you're just paying more money. At that point, it may be better to finish your degree uh, in Mexico and then come to the United States as a graduate student. Now, if you're not that far along, if you're just a first year, second year student, it certainly makes sense to explore the opportunity to, to transfer the units that you've completed into a, a degree program here in California. I, I think you would not lose a lot of credits. Um, Thank you. I don't know if you want to add something else, Sara or Christina. No, I think Paul pretty much said it correctly and succinctly. Thank you. Um, well, I think uh, those were the questions that we had in here. Um, thank you so much. It was very interesting to hear from you. And thank you for clarifying all of this information. You're welcome. It was a great time. Thank you very much. It was very nice. I hope to hear from some of the students. Reach out to us um, and reach out to your EdUSA advisors to get some assistance as you make your big decisions. Yes. Thanks, everybody. See you in California. Before we before we say goodbye, thank you. Ah. Sorry. Before we say goodbye, I do want to remind everyone that is here that we do have a series of, it's a series of sessions uh, on May 3rd, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's Monday. Uh, we're going to be having uh, our next uh, webinar for our uh, webinar, our series. And it's the title is gonna be Opportunities to Work for Work Experience in the United States through your CPT or your OPT. So please register also for that. There's the link that you can, um, uh, that you can use for for that, and then uh, we are we'll be happy to see you here also on for that session. So thank you, um, everyone. 
uh, and uh, we will see you then uh, next on, on our next session. Bye. Good luck. Bye.